life to us is about creating and sharing. For the most part. So we create and we share, and we create and we share. And then we create some more, and then we share it with you, <laughs> and then we create something else, and then we share it with you. Like the time that we created bracelets, and we shared them with people that we met along our journey that we thought we'd most likely never see again. <laughs> or that time we created an adventure and shared it amongst three random dudes that we had just met two days before. Someone down here. <laughs> <laughs> and Lola, so it's six people. Oh no, and another dog, so it's seven. There's another dog. Two dogs. Two dogs. <laughs> or we've created all of this ridiculous music and shared it at the beginning of our videos for you all just to make our videos a little bit more personal. Yeah. I was six years old, broke my leg. I was running from my brother and his friends. Or that time we created candles made out of trash and shared them with you guys to help support our dream. And all of that money put gas right in our the gas, gas tank. tank. <laughs> right in the gas tank. So this one's my favorite. This is a wine bottle that we found. Or when we've created any of the 70 vlogs or videos that we've put up on YouTube and shared them with you guys. Uh, we absolutely love to create and share and share primarily with you. And now we have something completely new that we're super excited to share with you. And many of you may know, and it's gonna be an episode from our documentary series that we're working on, our most recent episode that just came out on Sunday. So this documentary series in particular, we created to truly help support our dream and um, continue living the, the lifestyle that we're living of freedom and travel um, and happiness. We wanna keep this thing going and this is how we're gonna do it. And for those of you that don't know, we're gonna be traveling from Germany to Spain and back in a tiny home on wheels and visiting as many places as we can. And we're gonna be creating two videos a week on YouTube, one going up on Tuesday and then one on Friday. And then if you want something a little extra, we're putting episodes of the documentary on Sunday on Patreon. And this is a little bit different of a style. So once we play the footage for you after this intro here, after then, we after we shut up. <laughs> then you guys will see um, the different dynamic of how we're going to be shooting this. So and, and why we're keeping it separate. Exactly. That's, that's the most important part. Yeah, the biggest asked question. Yeah, definitely. I guess the last thing that we say is in this episode, you'll see we're in New Orleans and that location was picked by our patrons. So our patrons are completely controlling where we go and what places we go to. So we gave them two options. We gave them Nashville, Tennessee, or New Orleans. They picked New Orleans, and that's why where we were in this video. And we're super excited to figure out where our first spot in Europe is gonna be, because they're gonna choose that. Exactly. And then where each spot is from there. It's completely in our patrons' hands. And I think it's really cool. It's gonna be really fun. Definitely. It kind of gives it a next level of a community-based um, experience. Yeah. So I guess without any further ado, Let's drop this episode. I hope you guys enjoy it. So it's been raining majority of the time for the last two weeks, which is a challenge when you live in a bus and you rely on sunlight for power inside of the bus. So it forces us to be a little more frugal with the electricity that we are using. And majority of the stuff Jordan and I like to do is um, outdoorsy stuff. We like to adventure, we like to go for hikes. So one of the kind of bummer things about uh, rainy weather is it forces us to um, do things that does cost money. So I mean we could sit in the bus all day long but um, we would probably kill each other. <laughs> so it forces us to go out to do things like go to the movies or go to museums. And today for instance we are going to be indulging in as much food as possible in New Orleans. So we're about an hour outside of New Orleans. We stopped in Baton Rouge last night. So uh, I think it's time to go make our way over there and dive right into the biggest food capital, one of the biggest food capitals of the world. Another thing about being in rain for like 
10 out of 14 days is you don't have electricity or you run really low on electricity. So right now we're not using our inverter at all and we're only using those lights, the little spotlights because they use the least amount of power and the fan when we absolutely have to. But our electricity is super, super low because we haven't gotten to be able to get a charge. So I think this might be the last day that we have this problem. It's supposed to be sunny tomorrow. Sunny in 75, baby. Sunny in 75, that's the weather? Yeah. Oh, we're gonna get a nice charge tomorrow. So we just gotta get through today. I just don't want it, the battery to die. Dude, this place is unreal. Why? What you gotta come see it. I'm ready. We're in the French quarters. So everything's like super French. Wait, are we going to a French restaurant? No, but like everything, all the buildings look like they're French. <laughs> Let's go, let's go, let's go adventure around. Okay. Bourbon Street is like the touristy area of New Orleans. It's where everyone goes to party, it's where all the street performers are, it's where everyone goes out to eat. And I can say from our experience so far, Bourbon Street was exactly as we imagined it and exactly what we pictured. Everywhere you look, there's a bachelor party or a bachelorette party and street performers everywhere. But the energy there is so positive. I've never seen so many people just dancing out in the streets, street performers, live music. You really don't even need to go into the bar or the club to experience the music. The two of us don't really party too much. When we have a big group of friends, we'll have a few extra drinks and or go to a bar, but uh, the two of us aren't big drinkers and the two of us aren't big partiers, but when you're in New Orleans, you have to have some fun. So the two of us had an absolute blast just walking up and down Bourbon Street and just being typical tourists, uh, doing doing all the touristy things from going to restaurants to going and checking out live music to watching the street performers to uh, to doing tarot card readings and talking to all these voodoo witch doctor people. Uh, we had an we had an absolute blast just doing all the stereotypical New Orleans stuff. And I feel like when you go to anywhere on the first day, that's kind of what you got to do. But with the pleasure and the enjoyment of a night out on the town and night out in New Orleans, we're also really dedicated to our health. It's something that's really important to us. And traveling makes it really, really hard to both exercise and to eat well. Mostly because they take more time when you're living in a vehicle, especially the cooking because setting up our stove and turning it on and heating up the pan and, and taking everything out of the fridge and then also washing everything without running water, it probably takes about twice or three times the amount of time as being in a house. And sometimes that extra effort is something you don't wanna do and eating out and getting some cheap fast food is a much easier option. And we also try to exercise as much as we can, but it's something we've gotten away from recently, probably within the last month. And the biggest reason for me is not having access to a shower every day. And working out and not being able to shower after just bothers me. And I think I use that as an excuse to, to not exercise as much as I should. But we're getting back on track. We got a really good workout in today. I do a lot of HIIT workouts, which stands for High Intensity Interval Training. And that's because it's really easy to do while traveling. And it's also really good for you. And it works really well for me because you don't need any equipment. You just need your sneakers and maybe a yoga mat or just a nice patch of grass. So this morning was a little rough. I'm not having a good time right now. I'm, uh, I'm super, super congested and my eyes feel like they're twice the size that they're supposed to be. He was waking up all hours of the night. Lola was in the middle between us. Um, and he woke up at like 4 a.m. and was like, all right, that's it. No more Lola in the bed. And I'm pretty sure it's one of two things. It's either an allergic reaction, probably from doing like push-ups in the grass yesterday, or it's conjunctivitis, which hopefully it's not that, because then Kaylee will get that. Oh! He was so stuffed up, and whenever his allergies are, um, are, are intense, they're only intensified when Lola is around. So we kicked Lola off of bed, and he woke up feeling like absolute crap this morning. 
We got a lot of stuff for Europe that we have to get ready for. And uh, we have to drive six hours and we have to do some video work that we got hired to do back from when we went to Costa Rica. And uh, a bunch of other stuff. And uh, when I feel like this, just gonna bring my B game, not the A game. So I tell Kaylee all the time. <laughs> not gonna be able to do things as fast or as good as I usually do, but bring in the B game. So we decided to go pay for an $8 shower at the rest stop that we stayed at, which isn't horrible. Usually they're about $10. Don't wanna go in and talk to someone looking like this. I mean, it's not that bad. You just look like you have a cold. If you went in there, you probably, they would look at you and think that you just woke up. I'd probably be like, that dude is, some some drugs. Yeah. No. no. All, all bloodshot. It doesn't Cap really. shower. <laughs> Maybe it'll be, it'll be weird if I walk in and I just have sunglasses on. No, love. It's normal to have sunglasses on during the day. Okay. I don't think. I really don't think we should load up in the bed anymore. I know. Oh. This. This shower to me. We just shared one, so it was, you know, four bucks a piece. Four bucks a piece, which isn't bad. Um, and it felt fabulous. It felt fabulous. Hot? No? Really hot. We've been out of water for about a day, um, and for some reason it's just been extremely difficult to find water. Uh, usually we fill up at glacier stations, but for some reason the one that we went to this morning there wasn't one there, so we decided to go to Walmart. Walmart usually has fill up stations, um, and the one we went to didn't have one either. So. We were out of luck with that, so we decided we might as well um, come to the dog park that was right down the street and let Lola kind of run around, get some energy out, since we'll be driving about five more hours today up to Chattanooga. So we're currently on our way to Chattanooga. We're going there because my family lives there, my aunt, my uncle, and my cousin. Which I haven't seen in probably about a year, so I'm super stoked to see them. Kaylee loves family. All about the fam fam. All about the fam fam. She's so excited to go back to Boston for a week too, just to see them. Absolutely. And we got two hours and 45 minutes of driving left. We're trucking. We're making. We're making moves. I'm pretty hungry. Jordan's pretty hungry, but we're gonna make some bomb ass food when we get there, or we may order up a pizza. So uh, we'll see what happens. Kaylee, I wanted to stop and make some lunch. Like Kaylee's just determined we, to truck it up there. We have places to go, we have people to see, <laughs> and at this rate, we're not gonna get there until nine o'clock, so we're gonna make moves. And we're losing an hour because we're going into a different time zone, so. Yeah, that's slowing everything gotta up. Gotta keep going. Getting back into that Eastern time zone. Yeah. But the amount of driving that we've been doing, the amount of driving that we've been doing these past two weeks has been a lot. Driving all the way across the country, and we didn't take the fastest way across because we went south down to Austin, then to New Orleans, now to Tennessee, and then to Boston. So it def it was not a direct shot at all. And we probably put in how many hours of driving? Probably at least forty. Forty hours. Probably. You think? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I'd say like somewhere between thirty-five to forty hours. Yeah. We've been driving. Yeah. I know we've done. I look at the speedometer there. I think we've done about 3,000 miles. That seems about right. Somewhere between 2,500 and 3,000 miles. Yeah. So we're pretty excited to get to a house and to have only like something like 18, 16, 18 hours left yeah. of driving back up to Boston. We just passed it. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> She's yelling. yelling. Here she is. Hello. <laughs> so this is it. Gosh. Yeah. Let me just look around. Take it all. <laughs>
Wow. <laughs> 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 I'd probably kill my husband in this small space. <laughs> oh, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> So the last time that I've seen any type of family um, or close friends has been about three months. Um, so, dang, it feels wicked good to finally be with some what family. Do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I've said this before, but this traveling really puts things into perspective um, and shows me how much family means to me. And I think that's something that's really stuck out um, within the last few months, even more so. I mean, I think when we originally left, I definitely felt it, but um, we read this quote the other day and it was, uh, the best part about traveling is the coming home. And that is so unbelievably true because when you come home, you feel like a totally different person and in a good way like you feel just <sighs> lighter and you feel like you can truly be present with um, the people that you're with and uh, just that comfort that you feel when you do come home just feels so freaking good so we're pulling out of Kaylee's aunt and uncle's house right now and we're driving north towards West Virginia, then Pennsylvania, then Connecticut, and then Massachusetts. And it's a really weird feeling right now. And it's really because this trip for us was only supposed to be about six months. And then we were going to go back to our old lives of working corporate jobs, living in downtown Boston, and doing whatever we needed to to get by. And now we're going on eight months, eight months of traveling across the country. We've gone into three countries now, actually, with Canada and Mexico. And I always thought that when we were driving through these states, when we were driving through Tennessee, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, that they'd be full of sadness because it would be close to the end and it'd be close to the end of our trip. And that, and that the end would be in sight, it'd be right around the corner. We'd be heading back towards Massachusetts. And while we're heading back towards Massachusetts right now, it isn't the end. And in reality, it's just the beginning. <laughs>